it's so great when one finally develops the skills to be fully self-sufficient on a motorcycle and enjoy it. But if you're in a position to be able to afford a little extra luxury and comfort, <laughs> actually a lot more comfort and luxury, then I might have a perfect solution for you. In this video, I will interview the owner of the Storyteller Overland Mode Adventure Van. The owner happens to be my business partner, Peng Shi, and I've also had a chance to experience the, the Adventure Van, and I find it to be the perfect addition to any garage and probably the best support vehicle for any serious motorcycle adventure touring. Let's dig into it. All right, let's see. Let's see the inside, finally. <laughs> yeah, cool. Good for you. Thank you, appreciate it. Oh, look at this beautiful adventure van. Here, I'm gonna take a seat <coughs> in this captain's chair, and you can let me know what this is all about. Take us on a little tour, Paul. Sure. Um, first of all, you have the cabin light control here. It's a dimmable light. Oh, nice. Everything's it. LED, obviously. Yeah. The controls for the awning, awning lights, everything is over here. Uh, there is an aux button, so I, you can do whatever you want with it. I'm thinking about putting a garage door or a garage light switch uh -huh. over here. Because one of the design that I don't like is the garage door light or garage light uh -huh. switch is in the back, all the way in the back. So if you want to look for something here, yeah. you have to go outside to turn it on. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it's poor design. But to Storyteller's credit, they they listened to customers and they uh, made that change for the 2022 models. Okay, great. So you have here, this is the cabinet, the living space. Uh, this chair has two seat belts pull tested so you can actually put child, child seat on here or just real adults here yeah and you know young child seats because it's forward facing or rearward facing it's not sideways so mm -hmm. that's a huge problem for me to try to find a play a van that can actually accommodate one or two kids you know yeah in a yeah. child seat so pull tested that's great yeah and it's mm -hmm. a it's not just a lap belt it's a no it's, yeah it's a full three point right uh, obviously the two passenger seats the these seats i have to I have to give it to mercedes it's so comfortable yeah <laughs> for long journeys to, so um i actually did yeah. a trip long the longest trip i've done in this van is from california all the way to indiana a whole week and throughout the whole trip i didn't even realize this is uh, i never felt discomfort in the seating uh-huh and it wasn't until my sister later pointed out, she said, oh, this is uh, this is actually really comfortable for a long journey. Yeah, there's And no I even noticed, here. oh, yeah, there was no, yeah, there was no discomfort, pressure points or anything like that. No back pain. Yeah. So. And it looks like some kind of vegan leather or something. Well, I don't know. I think it's just leatherettes, whatever the synthetic leather. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, because it's very easy to clean. Yeah. There's no creases or anything. So, obviously, both captain chairs turned 360 heated i believe here's a little yeah, heated as well two I usb believe. oh they're heated yeah nice yep. great power great. adjusted a ton of controls but the the van is mercedes benz so mm -hmm. you yes. expect yes great little storage units up there too little cubbies mm -hmm. on both awesome so I haven't done a lot of mods to the van, uh, partially because I like to keep it stock to keep the weight down. Mm -hmm. And also I like to live in a van for a while before I figure out what I need. Yeah. One of the things I found was this shelf. I found this shelf very uh, useful. Everybody was telling me you should get the shelf, but after living for maybe a month, I realized they were right. Uh -huh. At least for me personally, you, know, you, you really should, if you are trying to get a van, you really should also do a little bit uh, extended uh, experience experience the van a little uh, longer before you decide to do mods but what do you mean shelf it doesn't come with the shelf no it does not come with this shelf mm -hmm. uh, so you uh, this one I got is called when by van wife and you can put it in yourself you just remove a few bolts and the beauty of this one is oh I see yeah I see yeah. The beauty of this one is it actually comes with this little hanger here. So if you decide to ever modify it, add a privacy curtain here, uh -huh. or in my case, I actually just use hang a curtain, white curtain here, and I put a projector up and I can watch a movie. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I have to tell you, 
for me, I don't live in it full time, but when we were in Colorado and it got down to zero Fahrenheit, you definitely can feel a difference, the front of the cab where it gets cold uh -huh. versus the back. And it's amazing if you just, you don't need fancy privacy curtain with insulation. That, if you live in full time, definitely something worth considering. Yeah. But even if you just pull a curtain, just a it regular bed sheet, area. you can feel the difference. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And the same thing with this, if you hang a, a bed sheet here. Now for me, because I don't travel to those cold places for extended period, I don't, I'm not, I don't ski for, you know, three months at a time. So I definitely see the value of people who actually get those insulated curtains. I see. But for short trips, if you need a, in a pinch, don't, you don't need to buy one. You just get a bed sheet and hang it right yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> this is cool because you hang your little, little dry you know, rags and Yeah, that's and my sister. She, stuff, so. she helped me mod that and she's very proud of it. Yeah, very proud, very, <laughs> very complicated mod right there. <laughs> so you're talking about insulation. Yeah. Let's talk about insulation because apparently insulation and humidity control is the biggest issue for these kinds of vans, no? Yes, yes. So they use the wool for uh, natural wool so that when you uh, do get moisture, like if you're showering or cooking, mm -hmm. if you do get moisture into those uh, wool insulation, they dry out quickly. Uh -huh. So they don't create mold, potential mold. And, uh, and this insulation, mm -hmm. the side benefit of, first of all, this insulation is really good. Uh -huh. The insulation is very good? Yeah, it's, uh, it's for... You experience it yourself yeah. in the cold. Yeah, it stays warm in here, and in the heat, it actually helps insulate the hot air outside from going in. But more importantly, it's actually really good sound insulation too. Mm -hmm. uh, I was surprised. That's a side benefit of, I guess, using thick insulation. Well, the the coolest thing is still to this day, natural materials seem to do best. You know, for example, even in motorcycle racing, the best protection is leather like kangaroo leather you know really I didn't yeah know that. <laughs> even next to like synthetics and and uh all kinds of materials that are incredible mm -hmm. pieces of engineering leather is still the best in um fl uh, fletching in arrows it's still the best when it comes from feathers instead of synthetic materials it's mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of impressive so yeah wool contains uh or, or maintains its insulating properties even when it's wet so it's kind of cool i sleep on a wool Wool pad basically mm -hmm. sheepskin I love it so uh, it's got this big window here and these crank open uh, towards the top I guess no, here yeah so they stick out now I have a love-hate relationship with these windows I love the panoramic view if you bring your camera here you can see that uh -huh. so if you're traveling with family you want the people in the back row to also see that same view and this door right now is open, but yeah, it's the same. It's the same, essentially the same window yeah, up here. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, you're, it's like you're living or driving a regular vehicle. Yeah. There are some models out there that have smaller windows in the back mm -hmm. and you can barely see out of it. So I do like the white, win, white window, however. And they have like a little mosquito net. Yeah, mosquito net and ventilation. However, uh, this window doesn't open fully. So uh, uh. yeah, so if you want, more ventilation or for example if you want to take a picture and the windows are dirty if the back row person wants to take a picture when the windows are dirty yeah. it's kind of hard to do they're tinted it seems yes not yep. by much but can somebody from the outside see inside right now if you keep the lights off during the day pretty hard mm -hmm. in fact it's funny because sometimes you park in the parking lot and people walk around and check out the van and they don't realize you're sitting in there so you're kind of watching them, oh, okay. <laughs> spy on them. <laughs> that's interesting yeah. cool. so we have a 120 volt outlet here or two, two, of them. two of them yeah i'm charging my gopro stuff right there and dgi drone and then this is convertible into a bed yeah yes can we see that yes uh this is a lagoon table I gotta uh, say another thing I really dislike because it yeah. seems so weak, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's, I don't know, it just seems, it, it is seems adjustable, heavy, but, but it can't contain a lot. Yeah, it is adjustable. I actually uh, reversed it so that it doesn't uh, swing around too much, but if you flip it the other yeah. side, you can actually swing it all the way back uh -huh. and forth. Uh, but yes, it's, it's a pretty weak window, uh, excuse me, table. There are aftermarket mods, uh -huh. which I might end up getting, uh, where they actually have a table that flips out. Mm -hmm. So you expand the usable surface. Now oh, I know okay, why yeah. they did this. I know why they made this small, because it fits 
down here uh -huh. when you put it away. Understood. Uh, but you know, I personally would prefer. I actually prefer if they just put a giant yeah, stick right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a traditional RV. Like there's a nothing wrong. Yeah. Yeah, because these so, three so people sturdy. can 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 eat together. You know. Precisely. Because this yeah. guy where I'm sitting right now can't do much. And yeah, it just seems flimsy. You don't want to. You almost don't even want to use it. Can you use it? Can you can you bring it forward? When you have this set up like a lounge chair, or your you know your feet are resting on the seat, no, you're, you can't. Huh? No, see no. that would be amazing because you can no. work that way. Yeah, but there are ways because there is a mod where you can add a mount here, uh, and then the table will be. You can actually, when you're driving, swing it forward, it becomes a table between the two seats, and also you don't have to remove this table because right now oh, to. Okay. In order to use it, you have to flip this chair uh, as a lounge. Uh -huh. uh, you have to flip this chair, which I'll demonstrate. Uh, but that table leg gets in the way. So if you mount it here, then you don't have to remove oh, the I table. See. Now, here's something I do want to point out. If you are considering a van, there's not going to be, or RV for that matter, there's not going to be the perfect vehicle. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to do some kind of mod for things that you don't like. And this could be one of the things that yeah. I'm going to look into. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, there's always going to be a give and take in, when it comes to van or RV, just because of the size and and you just have to pick what's important to you. Before we put it down as a bed, let's take a look at what's behind it. Sure. Because uh, one benefit of this van is that it does have a bathroom slash shower area, mm -hmm. but that is usable during the day. It's not a dedicated bathroom, right? And that's what makes it a different from a competitor, for example. Yeah. So for me, as Look at me, I'm 6'2", and you can see in in uh, promotional pictures, they will use wide-angle lens, so everything looks gigantic. Yeah, but I, I should clarify, I'm using a, a wide lens as well on the GoPro, not the super wide, just mm -hmm. the wide. But just for me, if you, have a hum yeah, if you have a human here to for scale, you can understand. So look yeah. at this, this is actually quite narrow right here. <laughs> yeah. It's not that big. I am a bigger person, but uh, you know, for a normal person, this is, you cannot have two people side by side here. Mm -hmm. For the, this little amount of space, I want to take full advantage of it however mm -hmm. I can. And I like how flexible this van is. Mm -hmm. So there's not a giant bathroom or anything yeah. blocking the way. Or the light. Yes. And, and it depends on your preference. Some people just have to have a bathroom, that's fine. But for me, you know, I don't live in a full time. And uh, most of the time I like to have this space mm -hmm. uh, for, for flex use. And you've been actually pointed out this uh, yourself, which is how long or how often are you going to use your shower and toilet in a day? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So even when you have it, we, we use outside showers or not outside showers, but yeah, outside showers or toilets yeah, when we have the, when we have the chance, you know, mm -hmm. you don't so, want to be filling your great tank if you don't need to mm -hmm. or using your water. So, so then the beauty of this van that I like is this can be a storage during the day. But you can take it out, and this is actually a shower pad right mm -hmm. here. Oh, cool! And and I've actually seen some van lifers doing this uh, mod themselves. They just basically hook a shower curtain around. Mm -hmm. But Storyteller has made this a much easier process by having this halo shower system. So with this curtain down, and pull it out. Yeah, that's awesome. Now you have your shower. Yeah. And obviously the shower can go in there. Yeah, look at that. And I'm amazed at the water pressure and how hot it can get. It's a proper shower, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, it's wide enough so the, the, the curtain doesn't stick to you when you're taking a shower. You can dry it more as well. So pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, the first day that Nick took this shower, I actually took a video. It's <laughs> hilarious, because it, I, I was curious. I want to see what people, the uh, first time experiencing this shower, what do they feel or how do yeah. they feel? Because I'm a little jaded, I've already used it so many times. Yeah, so, I was pretty so. blown away. Okay, turn the right hand side, there's a knob, turn it on. Turn and push it out. Push it out, yes. And then, yeah, and then see that, yep, there's a valve on the oh. actual oh, closet. It's like a control. Yes. Oh, wow, it's so hot. Oh my God. <laughs> what? Oh my God, pump! I mean, I'm taking a hot shower in the middle of the mountains, and there's so much water. <laughs> Bong! You don't understand. Oh, I'm all wet. <laughs> it's so much better, pump, than a bottle shower. 
Oh. Now, can you can you like unhinge one of these corners and make this a curtain? No, no, you cannot. Uh, although this curtain is removable, so you can remove this whole thing to wash for for wash. So I noticed that uh, the shower, pardon, but it feels a little flimsy, like the frame. Yeah, it's interesting because this actually broke at one point for uh -huh. me, but it was repaired under warranty, and uh, so these this frame is actually held up by if you can see. These little yeah, bolts, yeah, yeah, I don't know what they're called, but these little uh, four little bolts here in the back. So they're kind of, yeah, they're kind of flimsy. I don't know why they can't just put something more robust on there. So yeah, because if you slip or something, or if you catch yourself, yeah, honestly, yeah, or just you, you know put heavy things uh, like shampoo sure. bottle or something in there. I just, I just have a worry that it will break. So I try to. Cool. So does this light. come with the toilet then? Yes, it came with a tiny little uh, two and a half gallon capacity uh -huh, toilet, uh -huh. a porta potty uh, that fits in here. You can tell your viewers to go <laughs> watch my channel. I did a review of the stock toilet and uh, long story short, it was too small for me. Yeah. So uh, also it's, you have to kind of squat down to sit on it. Now, yeah. if you're okay with that, which is perfectly fine, everybody, you know, some people can handle it, some people yeah. can. For me, it was just too small. So I got this uh, bigger fed for a toilet instead. Yeah. So this is a throne right here. Pretty amazing. If you want a full breakdown, you're gonna have to go to his YouTube page to hear the reasoning behind why you wanted to switch it and why that was a better move so pretty pretty cool sink kitchen sink mm -hmm. let's talk about that remember i was telling you about the draining because we're sliding oh, it this see, way yeah. so there's a little bit of water in there i see yeah i apologize the van we didn't really clean it because we've been using it for the last seven yeah, days yeah so sure. it's, it's not a fancy instagram review uh where we clean up everything and i I don't have a bikini on with the window back door <laughs> facing ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what I notice is that it's got a pump to suck the water out as yes, well. Yes. Why? Why is uh, that? I believe, uh, in, if any of you know this for sure, you can correct it. Correct me in the comment. But I believe that the way the plumbing is designed, because the drainage have to go down under the van and go back up oh, to it. the tank. So, because you know you have the floor here, if they put the sink here, you probably don't need it. But on this side, you basically need some pump to drain the. So, if you're in a very cold area, is there a chance for that those pipes to freeze then, or are they insulated? No, no. Here? That's the thing is they're all inside. Okay. The van vehicle itself insulated. Great. Now, uh, when people do four season van, when they're talking about their van is four season or RVs four season, it's a marketing term. Not a single van that's going to be able yeah. to support that unless you're talking about you know like two million three million dollar overlanding yeah. vehicles yeah but this one is pretty pretty damn good yeah i've had this like i said in colorado to up to down to uh zero degrees and yeah. it, nothing yeah was using it normally cool no issues yeah it looks like a spacious deep sink and this pops up and now i mentioned one time when i closed the lid and this was pointing up it actually mm -hmm. opened the water yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of a little bit of design flaw. However, yeah. if you just remember, like for me, yeah, like that. Yeah, I and see I how it, it kind yeah. of opens up, up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, so it just get in the habit of stainless steel, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, uh, I I got in the habit of doing that, putting it in, and it has not been a problem for me. And to me, it's valuable to have an extra hugging surface because if you look at this, yeah, half of my table is already full of stuff. So when I'm cooking, it's nice to have this surface yeah. and that area to to uh, uh, put my stuff. Now, yeah. um, I have heard that people say this thing could break potentially just from slamming the door or accident, accidental break, breaking it. Because um, it's glass. Yes, it's Tempered glass. glass, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, again, you can mod it yourself. Yeah. If you don't like this thing, mod it. Yeah, and I noticed it doesn't have, there's no extender for the surface area because oh, this, that, is a, this yeah. looks like a breather. Yeah, it's a it's a vent. That's one thing I really hope they can someday figure out how to do this is to maybe design some kind of pull-out table or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, pull to out, yeah. Yeah, because uh, the, I don't know about the current Rebel because they moved the fridge here, but the original Rebel's fridge was here facing this way. So there's actually room for a flip-up table right yeah. here. 
and I love that. And yeah, but the benefit of having a fridge here is you can access it from the outside because the door opens all the yes. way. Yes, so when you're pulling up with your grocery cart, you can stand outside and load the fridge. That's okay. a huge advantage. So you don't yeah, have to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I noticed, yeah, the door swings fully open too. Yes. So again, his video, uh, his channel has a video of how much this fridge can fit, which is pretty impressive. So <laughs> definitely go there to see. Can we open it? Do you mind? Yeah, of course. There it is, yeah. It's got a little freezer. We like our ice cream at night. Yeah. Pretty neat that you could have a badass day of adventure touring and then have an ice cream and a hot shower. Yeah. And spoiler alert, the reason it can fill so much is because it's really deep. Like, yeah. This is how deep it goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. So it's that whole so, thing. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, deep. Yeah, like oh, maybe up to here. Pretty deep, that's though. It. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So it has one, two, three, four, five storage units here. Mm -hmm. May we open it and check it yeah, out? Yeah, sure. So, so yeah, you notice locks, this has yeah, a yeah, positive cool. lock so that it won't open when you're driving around. Oh yeah, cool. It's padded, huh? So mm -hmm. things are not rattling inside. And yep, yep. And, uh, and here's a little cool van life hack. Get baskets because other things will fall out. But mm -hmm. if you put baskets and put, use the capacity, awesome. higher capacity. Cool. Stack Your toilet higher. trees here. This here is a little, it looks like a radio speaker. Yeah, it came with a van. It's uh -huh. a speaker, detachable speaker, and it charges while you're driving. Oh, cool. And this thing is loud. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't, I don't need my home theater. Yeah. I just use this as a speaker. It's awesome. Bluetooth and it's tethered to this yeah. this folding hook, so it doesn't fall and break anything. You know, tonight Maybe. we can set up that screen yeah, projector. Yeah, you can film sure. a little bit of that. I mean, I mean, a little little shameless plug. To be very honest, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of his work because. He goes to these amazing hikes in the Sierras and he films them. He provides a guide. And some of these are backcountry hikes, meaning there's no route. You basically choose your own route. So uh, it's just a great way to be inspired when you're actually looking at the mountains. So yeah, I look forward to that. And here you have hot, cold, you pull it out. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oh, just a note too, if you want to use this as a toilet privacy curtain, you just pull it out and put the toilet there and you can have oh, okay, yeah. almost like a bathroom. And these are magnetic, so that's yeah, how that so closes. Yeah, they stay together. Cool. Yep. Pretty, pretty cool design. You were talking about um, closet space, and, and that's actually, I think, one of the weaknesses of this van. There are only these four closets, or five, I guess, uh, that you can use uh -huh. in the back. And some RVs where you have a seating area in the back, underneath a the seat, they can put store additional storage. Mm -hmm. But this one, because it has an open garage, it doesn't have that. So you're left with these little, and especially because the van tilts mm. and tapers to the top. Oh, so okay, you have okay. a relatively oh, shallow I see. space. I see, see what you mean. It does see? taper a lot. Yeah. yeah. So really not that much space in here. Now, it could be a pro for some people because this garage area is uh, your own design. It can be your own design. Yeah. For me, I don't really carry mountain bikes around mm -hmm. uh, or anything tall. So I have to basically use these storage boxes. Mm -hmm. Now you can get aftermarket shelving or closet space yeah. if you want. But for me, you know, I don't live in a full time. It really yeah. doesn't bother me that much. So sorry, it's a no, <laughs> kind of a mess. So to turn on the light, you actually have to be. Yeah. So if I want to see what's that. inside, I have to go all the way yeah, back there yeah. to do it. That see what fun. I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So that's, if you don't use this garage space, for mountain bike it can be kind of a mess to organize but the, the platform looks serious like well that i i think i read 800 pound capacity for yeah the bed. well because so you sleep on it <laughs> look at that so yeah. so i know people who uh do it full time sometimes they actually use this as a worktop so well yeah because this, this, this is one piece right it's, yeah yeah so you can remove this piece and have a bench to work on mm -hmm. Uh, whether you're like cleaning your carb or fixing something on the bike or just working standing desk pretty yeah, cool there are aftermarket if you just google search uh seats that fold down here so you can actually have a seating two oh, seats smart. side by side yeah. it's really clever i really like yeah. and this is not sponsored or anything but uh uh kenny and venture vans cool. big fan of their products and i don't have it but you know if you want to look into it it's, uh, what's that right there which one this year this whole box oh this is the volta this is the battery oh that's the battery yes yeah so it's twelve thousand kilowatt hour volta battery and uh, uh i believe it's a 3600 watt inverter now throwing all these numbers out when i was researching it for me i'm not that technically minded 
all of those numbers, I don't know much about solar or power or anything like that. So to me, it means nothing. Mm -hmm. What matters to me is how long can I use it? Mm -hmm. And in real life, uh, without any uh, concern for conservation, as in, look at all the stuff that I'm charging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm using my external hard drive, which needs power, computer, charging all the cameras two of us have, all the GoPros, all the drones, yeah. uh, everything. Uh, on average, one day, it uses about 20% if I conserve a little bit uh, for by just by myself, 30%. Yeah. We've been using 30% one day. So you can comfortably park at one place for two days. If you conserve, you can comfortably park in one place for three days. Uh, without recharging it. Now, if you do have to recharge it, this thing has such a powerful inverter, it takes about an hour and a half to two hours of driving to fully oh, charge it oh, back to 100. Highway driving or just driving? No, it, the rev has to be over uh -huh. 1500 RPM. Now, there's no generator, right? No, yeah. no, there is no generator. Now, they, if you get a beast mode, it actually comes with this boost mm -hmm. mode. I, you know, I don't know the term, the exact term, I can't remember, but it's some, it's basically restarts the engine and mm -hmm. generates uh, the diesel, kind of becomes a diesel generator, the, the vehicle engine, yeah. and it will charge up the battery that way. So if you are looking for long-term boondocking at the same place for a week at a time mm -hmm. or more than three days at a time, then you should seriously look at the beast mode because that one that feature yeah is is uh something so that's that what makes this van different basically it's that everything can be ran electrically for a few days at least more if you conserve and that also includes this microwave think, yeah microwave six so, or seven hundred watts something yep, yep, wild yeah yep. we've been we've been using that to eat and it's so convenient you know and the the best thing with this uh inverter is that i can run multiple appliances at the same time uh, my ugly coffee. <laughs> coffee maker in there. Okay. Yeah, every piece of space has to be used yeah, in a van. Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. So what is this, by the way? Because this takes. Oh, a lot this of is space. a Berkey travel uh, water filter. Travel, huh? Yeah, travel. <laughs> Backcountry. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I probably will do a review on my own channel at yeah. some point, but this this is not great for travel. However, a lot of uh, van owners or RV owners use mm -hmm. it. It's great for filter water. Don't get me wrong. I do love this filter. It's just that they designed it in such a way that the travel version yeah. is a pain in the ass to, to, to transport still. One, two, three, four. And they yeah, get four, as you four drawers. Yep. Yeah. You just have your, your, your kitchen appliances. Yeah, so three is actually the usable one. The bottom one is big enough to fit a small Instapot. Oh, nice. Instapot, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. we've been using that for rice. And mm -hmm. that. Yep. Cool. So the top one is where the stove actually lives. Oh, let's see that, yeah. Yeah. The so stove this is, that comes with the van, right? It's yes, not, yes. So it comes with this. And uh, it's a 1500 watt stove which is burner which is really really cool you know i'm chinese and i love my gas burners with the heat and everything but uh, i was skeptical of this induction stove at mm. first because i was worried i was thinking of the old electric stove where it took forever to heat up but this yeah. thing it's fast and not to mention it's clean like look at this yeah it's easy to clean yeah yeah it's well clean. you don't really need to clean and there's no potential for carbon monoxide or anything because there's right. no live live fire live right right flames so and, pretty pretty cool and they actually it's interesting because it used to be mounted in here but they made a design change in the i believe 2020 is uh now it's portable so I can go outside in that yeah. stove. I can even take this at home. <laughs> yeah, home you can just cook it. Yeah, pretty yeah. great. Yeah. And funny story, because we were one time we were having a party and we ran out of the fridge space at home and we actually went to uh, use this fridge. Yeah, this is this is very usable space and yeah. usable design. And I like how everything fits away, you know, so you actually mm -hmm. have space to work with. But And the drawers lock. lock yes. And, yeah, cool. Now, you normally use this space with the bed always installed um mm -hmm. let me let me look at this thing what is this thing right here which one what is that right there the, the, oh these have strapped there. yeah these are actually this i uh if you get a beast mode it comes with bungee course but uh -huh. i just made my own and uh yeah you uh strap these window shades so, so those are insulated yes these magnetic. are magnetic Yes, magnetic, and uh, well, this is actually for the back door. But well, show us in the back, yeah. Right. Or you can't reach it, huh? I can't reach it right now. Well, here, let's, let's do this. 
let's see how good is my throw. <laughs> Are you capturing it? Yeah, yeah, right here. There. Oh, nice. Yeah, you see that? Magnetic? Yeah. And you can I mean, actually use it on both sides if you want? No, no, they have a specific shape, so oh, you have I to see. put the right one there. But well, yeah, can't you use that one on the other side if you want it to... Oh, you mean flip it? Yes, yes, yes. So, so two sides, reflector, yeah. if you want to reflect the heat from the outside. And uh, uh, this side is if you want total darkness in the winter. Um, when you, this is facing out, it's really stealth. So if you want to camp, stealth camping in yeah. a parking lot somewhere, it's nice to have that. Stuff. And you really can't see inside. There's no cracks or anything. It's really well made. And yeah. every window has yeah. that as well. So. Yeah. Uh, and they stole away, away there then. Mm -hmm. Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, it's neat that the bed has uh, these holes. You didn't have to drill anything, right? No, no. It came yeah. with it. So that you can use it. You can use that for pretty neat. Is this is the bed fully stowed now or because there's a lot of space? Yeah, cool. yeah, it is fully stowed. I mean, you can make it a little tighter. Yeah. I actually leave some room because when this bed is folded, you see the pillows? Uh-huh. Because the flare space, so there's actually, here, why don't I just uh, pull it down? Oh, the flare space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you want to see the, the bed? Murphy bed down there? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So there's a strap back here. Uh-huh. That holds the bed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you just put it down like this. This oh, side. Yeah, the flare space, perfect place for your pillows. Yep. And then you flip this around. Oh, that's cool. It's a lot of flat area. And you, you are six foot two. Two? Yep. And you're comfortable? Yep. You don't have to bunch up or anything? You don't have to collect your legs? No, it's it's almost an exact fit with a little bit of room extra. Um, and you didn't have to modify the foam? It's comfortable enough? The foam, some people don't like it uh, stock because it's rather firm. Mm -hmm. I personally love firm beds yeah. for my back, so it's very comfortable for me. This is actually, I actually love this bed more than the mattress I have at home. Yeah, uh, but, oh, that's interesting. But people would just get a new mattress. You know, this is... Eventually, I'll have to replace this once it goes, gets old. So and at the headboard, you actually deal. have a window, and it looks like it's a sliding window. That's awesome. Yep, yep. Fresh air. You wake up, you see the sunset, you don't even have to move. Yep. Oh, and you even got, like, charging. Yeah, the right there, two more plugs. So you can work there. And there are actually two more plugs in the garage. There's a bunch of places you can plug in, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, so... Um, and you can run the AC uh, from... With a battery system, yes. That's awesome. Volta, so... Oh, well, that's that's neat. So if you have dogs and you need to go to grocery shopping, you, you know, you can leave them inside and they're super comfortable. Yes. Uh, interesting fact, in California, you're actually not, even if there's air conditioning, you're not allowed to Oh, that's good. Leave. Yeah. yeah, which I think is kind of, well, you know, the law was probably written before there was yeah. modern vehicles like this, like Tesla with all the battery. So uh, uh, here's the, yeah, the, the air conditioning will run uh, for... I think they said up to 10 hours. I've never tested the limit. I have a feeling it's going to be depending on how the temperature you set mm -hmm. and how hot it is outside. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I never want to give out specific numbers. But sure. for me, when I'm having meetings or I'm working here during the day, yeah. I keep it on. Uh, and usually I'm down to, for like two hours, I'm down to like 70%. So That's for me. And if you don't want to use the AC, you can use you can use the fan. Mm -hmm. And you say uh, it's not a fantastic fan. It's, a, it's, it's a different. Yeah, it is actually Max Air. Max Air. Yes. So I've noticed. So this is is manually operated. No, it's actually there's a remote here that you uh -huh. can use to control, and uh, it's a uh, it's an interesting unit. Six, Six buttons. buttons. Wow. <laughs> to control, control a fan. fan. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually prefer if it's manual, but they, it doesn't, uh, I think you can manually do it, but then you have to reset or do something afterwards. So can we so. see it operate? Yeah, yeah. So that's open. open. the fan on and, and open. it's now sucking air or pushing air? No, sucking, sucking air. air out, yeah. So if you come and look at this here, let me actually yeah. turn the fan down a little bit, the noise. Yeah. So you can adjust the fan speed right here. Mm -hmm. And this button here will only open and close the lid. Uh -huh. So if you just want air ventilation, you don't want to suck any air, you can do that. Okay. This will set it automatically. So if the temperature gets to 78 degrees, it'll start ventilating. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, just either blow air in or suck air out. Mm -hmm. I like sucking air out because yeah. if you blow air in, you're only getting wind here. 
if you're sucking air out, any window you have open, air will get drawn into it. No, yeah. you can you can already feel yeah. like the wow. It's yeah, like and a, this is on the lowest whoa, fan setting too. It's wild. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can even tell this 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 fairly loose screen is. Uh, yeah, I've noticed I'm leaning against it, and I'm, I might have. Yeah, this it. Yeah. this actually is a weakness of this window. Uh, I don't know the supplier. I can't remember the name of the supplier, but yeah, a lot of people report this net does come loose, but you can replace it. It's, yeah. Cool. Can we see the bed? I think that's the only thing left to do to bed? show how the bed comes off. We can close the fan out because it's actually oh, getting cold one. in here now. It's wild. <laughs> okay. right. It's so wild. All right. In the altitude, like if you're not in the sun, no matter how how sunny it is, it's cold. So yeah. Well, let me put this away and then we can do the bed demonstration. Oh, before we do that, yeah. Uh, let's, let me do this. You're still recording. Yeah. I'll just naturally cut it. Do it later. Edit it later. Okay. You can fit your toiletries in there, can't you? You can, but I have this. Well, if you do, you have a surplus a, of space. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, if it's one person, this is a very spacious and comfortable bed. If you have two people, it's getting a little tight. And if you have, uh, if you have three people, it's livable, but it won't be comfortable for long term. Yeah. I mean, yeah. people can always make it work. Yeah, for sure. I've known people who, like for uh, the whole family. Yeah. Uh, two adults and two kids living in here, but you know, it it depends on your tolerance. Push lights all throughout, and these yeah. run independently of the ceiling. Yeah, lights, so. it's independent, independent from that. Somebody wants to sleep, and then mm -hmm. we have a little hanger there. Yep. Cool. Let's see how the bed goes down. Sure. Before I do that, I just want to point out too is this shelf. People have complained that it kind of feels claustrophobic uh -huh. if you imagine your head over here, uh -huh. and the cabinet is right above your head. Uh, for me personally, it hasn't been a problem. Mm -hmm. um, I'm fully aware of the problem before I got the van. That's why maybe mentally I'm more prepared. Oh, I see. So it wasn't an issue for me. Now, I'm also very cautious. I only hit the bed head on this one time, but just be aware that potentially this could be an issue if you are tall and you wake up in the middle of the night forgetting that there's a cabinet here. Oh, okay. Now, the good thing is on the 2022s, there's actually a way to remove these two cabinets, all of these cabinets. If you want completely. it. Yes. Oh, okay. I, I can't imagine why I would do it just because, uh, like I said, there's limited storage space in here already. Yeah. But if you're just doing it for a weekend trip, if this is just a weekend warrior van, then you don't need that much storage space. Mm -hmm. Then definitely I would remove these two just so you have, so you have more space. You can sit up yeah. and, and like that. And, and uh, yeah, more comfortable avoid hitting your head so all right well, let's do this yeah bed. let's do it i'm curious okay because you always prepare it when i'm out and then i come in and the bed's ready in case i get too cold in the night and i need to come in so i've never actually seen you do it <laughs> yes so nick wants to get back to nature i think for him a camping trip is precious now that he has a baby so even though I have this comfortable van, he was trying to sl still sleep <laughs> in the tent. But, you know, every night I'd set the bed up because, well, you did come in one night, didn't you? I think one night. I yeah, came one in night there. it got really cold. It's just windy. wind, the wind, the wind. <laughs> so look at our campsite view tonight. Yeah, this is going to be a nice night of sleep, I think. No, we're at high elevation. You're not going to be able to sleep. Yeah, right here. All right, good. Do you remember how dirty she was yes. on that last day of Death Valley? Yes. Gosh, <laughs> the dirtiest little baby. Oh, uh, uh, she was so cute. She's cute. She's the cutest baby. God, this view, Pong. I gotta tell you. Yeah. To feel this clean, oh, yeah. and this hydrated at the end of a day of riding. Is That's the view. Of. That's the view outside. Now I want to stress. Oh, I'm God. still sleeping outside in a tent. Right, right. Because I'm mad. No, so, <laughs> just kidding. No, I, I like that experience, yeah. So he refuses to sleep inside. He set up a tent outside. I think it's going to get down to 27 degrees tonight. No. So, yes. No way. Well, well it's see, fine because I've uh, winter camp, snow camp is always all colder. Yeah, than but that. I didn't, I didn't bring all. Oh, that you didn't bring it. <laughs> I okay. mean, now I'm just gonna put everything. Well, I got. I'm gonna give you a set of <laughs> keys, and I'm gonna put this bed down. Okay. And if you wanna grab your mattress and come in, 
if I at uh, 2 a.m. <laughs> to be incredibly politically incorrect, if you're saying if I puss out <laughs> in the middle of the night, oh, pong. All right, good night. Set that up just in case, dog. So what? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll set the bed up. <laughs> Peace out. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, it's cold. Oh no. Oh. It's so cold. <laughs> okay. Bye. Good night. All right. So what I actually need to do is remove this tape up first. This is what I mean. If you get that mod where you don't re need to remove this table at night. Yeah, that doesn't look fun at all. Well, oh, it's in pieces too? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this, I did it the wrong way. My apologies. You're supposed to remove the top first and then remove this. It'll be mm -hmm. easier that way. But it also mounts. Mm -hmm. It slides in right here. And then you can put it, there's actually straps behind here where you can put it in. It looks heavy, huh? Sure. Oh, shoot! <laughs> wow, that's like, I don't know, 20 pounds if I had to guess? Yeah. That's uh, heavy. So, so then, you know, I'm going to put it here temporarily because we're just doing a demonstration. Uh, I would move this chair sideways a little bit. Folks. Uh, you have to, yeah, you have to unplug things. Yeah. Uh -huh. Folks. Just to show you, this is not stage. <laughs> show you how unprepared we are. <laughs> no, it's good. So, so you have to move the chair out of the yeah, way. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you have this side down. There's a gun safe here. Does that come with it? Yeah. Is it bolted? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then now you have a bed. You obviously have to put a mattress on it just because there's a gap here. Yeah. And yeah. 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 It's pretty hard. But the beauty of this is if you want to lounge during the day you can sit like this yeah yeah if you want if there's scenery out the back door if you want your instagram style view you put it up like that and if you have more than a few people more than just two people and you want to have a chat with everyone in here. Oh, you can seat. Yeah, you have a lounge. Two yeah. seats here, two seats here, but really probably one adult. Is yeah, yeah, people. yeah. So one, two, three, four, four people. Yeah. In a pinch, six people can sit here. Yeah, see what I mean? Uh, a little hole in the ground with a little table that this person can use when they're lounging back. You know, would be would just mm -hmm. be so much better than, than than what we have now that you always have to disassemble basically. Yeah. What is this little hole here? Some kind of access port? This is access port to the water heater system and it's actually a drain. And uh, the pump and all that. Yeah. yeah, low drain point. Uh, so if you need to winterize your van, mm -hmm. you need to drain all the water out of your piping system. I see. There's one access pump here. Okay, now that we are that was my GoPro. Feels super hot. Now that we are basically i think we've done everything of interest here uh okay we didn't speak about this but these are just your controls yeah. if you want yeah you should go to his channel to if you're more interested in in that part of the the storyteller okay i think that was pretty much everything about the van in a more or less detailed overview now here's the hard question what does this van cost how long does it take to get and before you answer that what are some of the other options that you looked at and why did you ultimately decide on the storyteller sure so i have been uh checking out vans i've decided 10 years ago that i will eventually get a van and uh, uh i actually strongly recommend if you're considering getting an rv or a van or a trailer whatever it is that you're thinking of rent it out and live in it for at least one week because that's what we did with all the different types of vans. We had a small camper van in New Zealand, which uh, is the size of a minivan. Uh, we loved the, the maneuverability of that vehicle, uh, but there's no shower, no toilet. We also rented a truck camper where we had, we were in Iceland, where we actually were able to go off-road. And we also rented a, just a traditional American RV in Alaska, where you have a fixed bathroom, fixed toilet and everything. 
Now, uh, for me, for us, um, the advantage of being able to maneuver in a regular parking lot uh, in the city and also be able to go off-road is extremely valuable. We also want a self-contained unit where you can be inside if the weather is terrible outside. We extremely windy or snowing, whatever it is, to be able to not even go outside, just turn around and uh, manage everything in the space is very important for us. So with all that considered, this is why we got this van. Um, you, you, if you have a truck camper, for example, uh, you have to move all your stuff from the cab into the camper itself every day. Mm -hmm. So that's a process. Or like I said, if the weather's bad. If you have a small camper van, you have the space issue and also the shower. Uh, if you have a giant RV, you have the maneuverability issue. So you can go off-road like this, not very far. That's why this is the perfect balance for us personally. And that's why I recommend if you're looking for a van or, or, or you know RV, live in it. Because until you live in it, you won't know. This van might be good for me, but if you have a family of four, it might be very tight. And also, if you uh, are the type that needs a bathroom, a fixed bathroom, this doesn't off offer that, and you might want to look at other vans. Mm -hmm. So when I started shopping for vans, uh, Winnebago Rebel was really the only one, the game in town. Mm -hmm. And I have to thank Winnebago for coming up with this product, because this kind of changed the game. Uh, there were other vans, I want to clarify. If you get um, custom building, custom build vans, mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, spend the money and get a adventure van like this. However, at the time when I looked into it, it could cost nearly $200,000 at the time before pandemic yeah, yeah, yeah. to get what I want to build something similar to the Winnebago, maybe a little bit better. So you would just get the, the cargo, or not the cargo, but yes. the empty version of the Mercedes? And yes. So you would get an empty Mercedes van and then you will go to an outfitter and they will custom build the whole thing for you. Now, just the custom build itself will be you know, over $100,000. And then you have to get a van. And to spec it like the Storyteller has, at least at the time, my version, if I spec it, it was uh, $86,000, mm -hmm. uh, so close to $90,000. And on top of whatever customization you do, it ends up costing almost $200,000. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I seriously consider the, the Revel. Um, however, when I actually checked out the Revel in person, oh, that's another thing. Make sure you check out the van in person. Mm -hmm. In the pictures, it looks great. But when I actually got there, one of the things I didn't like was that the seating for the back seat, the window was tiny. Mm -hmm. And also, there was a wall right up against behind uh, the passenger seat and all the controls were out there. So for me to sit there, and actually uh, probably it would be my father sitting there, and he's the same as tall as me, uh, the head would hit those control panels if there is an accident or if he's just leaning back. Oh, it's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really uncomfortable. Uh, not to mention, if you get hit you know, in an accident, there's no head protection. Um, so that was a big no-no for me. Now, if you have two people, it would work fine. Um, but for, for if you want to carry three people, it was just a uh, you know, safety issue for me. And also, in the tw year 2020, I believe, or 2019, they changed the design. It used to be you can have a kind of a third bed here. Well, when they changed that, uh, the back seat you can only sleep two. So you can, although you can sleep four people technically, yeah. you can only sleep two. Now we thought about whether to sleep on the floor for a third person or get some kind of front solution. It for adults, for us we have we would have three adults. It doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, and also not to mention once I'm glad we did them because once we started living in a van, you realize how dirty the floor can. Yeah, get yeah, yeah. Day, yeah. day, in, day in and day out. Very difficult. So it will be. Yeah, discussing that with other persons, you know, sleeping on the floor. So that kind of ruled that out. And uh, also uh, the the bathroom for me personally was just too small. When I got in there, I can barely move. Mm, okay, so it's whereas this curtain, I can move my shoulders around. Makes sense. If you're small, the shower will work because they they actually can turn. You can twist the yeah. toilet sideways to use it. But for me, it was just too small and. 
I, I noticed when you have a dedicated bathroom, it also affects the lighting inside. Yeah. So here it's brighter, open. Mm -hmm. But I do wish they had a, a, a skylight or something to yeah. bring in natural light from the yeah. from the roof. You know, it's interesting because to to for us, we like the light, we like the view. For some people, they actually prefer the segmentation. So they actually want to have uh -huh. the living quarter. Yeah the front quarter and then they have the bedroom section so for for those people yeah. that revel might work out great that's yeah like the some of the other uh, vans that are not adventure vans have that you know mm -hmm. where yeah. the front of the van is separated by the bathroom and kitchen area from the rear it's mm -hmm. pretty pretty yeah. smart design yeah and, and road track i forget the which which length probably the 19th and the 21 yeah yeah before you answer the final and most important question and before this gopro shuts down because it's overheating because they always do <laughs> I wanted to ask, what is the one thing you really wish was different on this van? The one thing that always bothers you? I suppose the plumbing. I would say the plumbing. That's always constantly a worry for me. Uh, and uh, the plumbing, and I think this is true with a lot of the RVs and campers, um, they use these, uh, there's a specific type of clamp. I don't remember the name of the clamp. But they use that clamp for all the plumbing and piping. Well, uh -huh. the problem is if you go into cold conditions, if you are going to uh, cold weather, the pipes will shrink and expand. And so it creates leak. Now, um, this is not just Storyteller. Everybody have that problem. And mm -hmm. if you have a Winnebago and you think you, getting a Storyteller will solve that issue, it won't. Mm -hmm. Every van has that problem. It's just one of those things you have to fix. Now, I actually have a friend who... Uh, uh, replaced all of her plumbing uh, connectors with another type of mm -hmm. plumbing. Now, I don't know the name of it. Uh, I one time looked it up when she first mentioned it. And I can tell you why this is why RV manufacturers don't do it. That one clamp, one, one connector costs like two, three bucks. You can get a whole bag <laughs> of those clamps for, you know, five bucks or whatever it costs. Yeah. So if you use all of that, it might add a lot of cost to the whole van manufacturer. Now, here's the thing. If Storyteller, if you are listening, people who buy this van and spend that much money, they just want something to work. So I strongly recommend you guys think about replacing it with something more durable in the plumbing. And mm -hmm. I think they are working. There are rumors that they are looking into it and mm -hmm. working on it. But, you know, if you're already spending 150000 or more or $200,000, a few hundred dollars doesn't no, cost much. No, not at that point. Yeah. So yesterday we had an issue with the sink. Yep. The sink won't drain. And I have no idea why. I thought I had to go get Drano, but I heard that Drano, you cannot use it on the plumbing for RV because of the rubber sealant. And I was thinking, you know, I do have a plunger, a little plunger that I bought for the van. But I forgot to bring it. <laughs> of course, when you need it, you don't have it. So I did a little bit of research and then I realized, you know what? We haven't dumped our gray water for two days and we took so many showers and we've been using water liberally. And I think that might be why. So this morning we dumped the gray water and voila. Nice, it's working. Yeah. That's kind of disgusting. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, because you were washing dishes and there was a lot of rice yeah. left over and you, you yeah, I, I thought it was the rice. I thought it was yeah. that, but it was not. Well, we did try to find out uh, what's where you know if the pipes were accessible, and we were very surprised that they're very accessible actually, and they're very wide and well done. Yeah, There's yeah, a, I was surprised. a I good was, angle. I thought it was like a weird, tiny, short little pipe, but it's actually a pretty robust. It's nice pipe. how this opens as well. Yes. And I've in the process we've learned that this slider is really kind of heavy duty, well made. Yeah, do you need a flashlight? Here it is. Oh, perfect. Well, let's check, let's take a look inside there. Yeah. Look at that, yeah. Very, very accessible. <laughs> of course, the light doesn't work. No, I see it, yeah. Wait. And there's the pipe. It's actually slanted. It comes down at an angle properly, like it should for drainage. It's this thick black pipe. You can see all the the connectors are very accessible. Fairly easy to get to. There we go. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. And yeah, all, yeah, all the water pipes. So we do have to remove the second and third drawer. Yesterday, I actually spent the time to remove it, and once you remove it, you can see it. The second drawer is bigger easy. too, so it's easier to yeah. get to. Yeah. yeah. And in the process, I've noticed how lovely the drawers are because they're how do you call that? Soft closing. Soft closing. Yeah. Luxurious. Beautiful. Show that again. Show that beautiful thing again. <laughs>
Oh, look God. at that. Good enough. That's yeah. awesome. And it's pretty easy. They're pretty easy to remove. There are these little tabs that you uh -huh. just push on. Ah, okay. And to put it back, you just set it back on the rail, align it correctly. And I don't know if you want to, you might want to point down here. And basically, you just drag this. Uh -huh. Hear that click? Yeah. Pull this out. And it's clicked in. Cool. Very, very cool. I think this one soft close is better. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh man. Like That's a Rolls good. Royce. Love so it. smooth. Love it. <laughs> so speaking of, <laughs> speaking of, what is the, I think somebody's shooting outside. Yeah. But what does this van cost and how long does it take to get? Okay. So I got really lucky. I got the pre-pandemic price. I I got this for one hundred forty-nine thousand. So after taxes, with like uh, and registration, it was one hundred sixty thousand. Um, uh, all the prices went up, but they do have four models now instead of just three. So they have the Ford LT, which mm -hmm. is Ford Transit based. They have the Mercedes Mine Classic mode. They have a Stealth mode, and they also have a Beast mode, which is the top of the line. And the top of the line one is uh, over two hundred thousand, I believe. Mm -hmm. And same uh, length. Yeah, everything's the same, except it has some extra features. Well, so fifty thousand dollars of extra features. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The beast mode is great if you want an out of the box capable van. Mm -hmm. So it has winch built in, it has air compression built in, and it has that important thing I was talking about, yeah. which is it will start automatically and generate uh, power. Yeah. To your Volta system. So if you value long term boondocking yeah. without moving the van, you really need to seriously look into that one. Yeah, because I got to say, every time we air down, it's a pain in the ass and takes forever to air yeah. back up. So having yeah. a internal yeah, compressor would be great. So, and how long did it take to get? Oh, I ordered the van January 2021 and I got the van at the very end of August, early September. But now I think the van is a year and a half if you order it. Wow. And depends on the model too, because the Ford, because of chip shortage, Ford, you cannot get Ford vans. Mm -hmm. They, I think they get allocated maybe 30 vans for the whole year of 2022. Mm -hmm. Well, there you are, folks. I hope that very inclusive review has been valuable for you. And if you're looking to spend upwards of 160K, then it better be inclusive. So thank you, Fong, for for your time and for that very My detailed pleasure. review for hosting me this whole week. And it's been great. It's been so great. It's been almost game changing, you know, to be able to tour the Sierras when there's still snow on the ground. We got caught in a flurry and to know that you have a, a comfortable place to take a shower at the end of the day and a cooked meal and a comfortable bed. And you don't have to worry about, you know, the elements. It just makes your game so much stronger. So uh, we're filming this outro with a DGI because our four GoPros have all overheated. So <laughs> pardon the jump cuts, but yeah, I think the information is well worth the, t the, the time and the effort. So thank you again. If you like what we're doing here, you can support this channel by liking, subscribing, click on that notification link. If you are looking on a more dirt capable and less comfortable out uh, outrig and then you can look at my review of my jeep gladiator and my kodiak tent basically a, a truck bed tent that's what i use when i go out because i can uh, but, but that's obviously has its own limitations we were actually here with that outrig and and when was that last time we met oh, thanksgiving yeah, yeah same place and it just got down to minus 16 in bishop that day mm -hmm. and in the middle of the night i just had to i had to pack up and go and my my air mattress uh, when I was pulling it away, it, it cracked from you know from being so cold. So yeah. obviously it has its limitations. So pros and cons, like you say, every every yeah. And I just want to add too is it, it's really not the vehicle. Before I got this van, I was doing all the same stuff yeah. in a Jeep Wrangler, yeah. and I was very happy. It's less about the vehicle. This vehicle will definitely make your life a lot easier and yeah. more comfortable. But remember, it is the journey, is the trip that you take, is not the vehicle itself. So Absolutely. keep that in mind. Pong Shi, Pong Shi Photography, uh, and Nick with Pegasus Motorcycle Tours. Uh, he is my business partner in that endeavor as well. Uh, guided motorcycle tours in the Sierras. The, the new tour is going to be soon posted on our website. If you're interested for that private tour, 
he is he's the most amazing guide you can have on a trip like this so take a look thanks again for watching thanks for your support please participate in the conversation until the next review nick and pong we're out wow. <laughs>